What's up guys, Rylan Russell here. Welcome back to the channel. Today, I wanna to walk you through a recent makeover that we did, a renovation to our tech booth. So like every other church in America, pretty much, we shut down for COVID for quite a while. And during that time, we realized there's not gonna be a better opportunity to redo our sound booth area than while no one else was able to be in the building. So this is what our old area looked like. You can see that it was just a temporary desk that was set out front and had our cameras kind of in front of it, had a walkway where people continuously walked back and forth behind the sound guy. It was really small and only the sound guy could be out there. So I came up with this little drawing of uh, a rendering of how I wanted to lay out the new sound booth. And I found a few different uh, older guys in our church that had awesome building experience. They took the plans and ran with it. And over about three days worth of work, most of it by them, not by me, uh, they built this new sound booth area. And now I wanna to talk to you about why we built it the way we did and maybe if you're out there wondering about redoing your sound booth, you can learn from some of our mistakes and maybe take some things we did and apply it to your build. So here it is. Here's our new tech booth that we built. It's a pretty simple layout. It's got two tiers. A top tier was the existing kind of area that we had and then we cut a hole in the wall and we added this lower tier where we have more of our operators down there now. We chose to only have one entrance to our sound booth area, the existing door that was there that's lockable. Design-wise, there was a few things that we wanted to achieve. We had to have a lot of power options, obviously, so we ran power, and then underneath the desk, we have some big power outlets that run there. We also wanted to solve the problem of having all of our cameras out front on tripods, so uh, I'm sure you've seen these systems where they have the poles that are mounted to the ground, and those cost way too much money. Actually, a guy in our church that welds built our camera pole that's bolted to the ground, I think for about $75. Also, we wanted to make sure we could access our cabling back and forth because our pipes come up actually in that back area. And so we have a trap door that we built and also an access panel on the front. We did choose to raise this platform and there is space underneath it to run cabling. The trade-off with that is that you're gonna have some foot vibration where your sound guy is gonna have some false representation of the bass frequencies in the room. So our sound guys know that, they just walk out into the room and run with an iPad if they need to um, during rehearsal, just to get a better idea of what the bass frequencies really are like. We could fill that with some stuff to help, but uh, having access to the cabling is probably for us more important. We installed a really wide desk countertop and our guys did a great job of matching our existing countertop with our different stuff to make it really look like this is how this was supposed to be built. So now let's walk into the sound booth and I want to talk to you about how we have ours laid out with our different operators in the different areas. All right so station number one audio. This is our soundboard area and we run a Midas M32 We've loved it, it's worked great for us here at Central. Over here, you'll see another monitor. This is actually doing our multi-track recording. It is recording onto an old Mac Mini. I believe it's a 2012 model with upgraded RAM, but using tracks live, uh, we have no problems whatsoever. We love to multi-track our stuff. That way, if we do need to go back and edit anything for a, a special song we're putting out on YouTube or uh, maybe a, a special Christmas program, we can go back if there was some mistake and re-edit it. And the way we usually do that is we play it back through the board and record a live mix, remix of that same thing. So we can use all the same EQ settings. We're not doing mixing in a box or anything like that. Our stream mix is also coming off of this M32. It's using a stereo aux output that is post fader. If you're more, If you're interested in how we're doing that. There's actually a video that I'll link to in the description that I've done walking you through how we do our broadcast mix. And if you're curious about uh, how ours sounds, head over to our YouTube channel for the church. It's CBC Owasso. Right here, you'll see our rack mount that we got off of nicerax.com. 
be careful when you're inputting that address. <laughs> I'll link to it in the description. But uh, this houses all of our wireless stuff. We're running Sure ULX um, beta, beta 87A microphones. And so this houses all of those, our lapels, things like that. Um, this Furman power conditioner is actually a sequencer as well that's turning everything on to our amps back in the back. Pretty common thing. Uh, this little gray stage right submixer is just a cheap piece of gear that we use that runs uh, two inputs. One is our iPad that's playing Spotify for our hallway feed, and the other is the board mix. During service, they turn the board mix up. When service isn't going on, they turn the iPod up. So that way in the hallways, they're not hearing what's going on in here during rehearsals and things like that. And the last uh, couple things here in the rack is a drawer that we keep our passenger's mic in and our Sure Antenna Distro, uh, which you can see our fins over here and at the other side of the booth as well. But this is station number one, Audio Land. All right, so moving on to the next station in this front area. This is our follow cam station. During worship, we have somebody that is actually roaming throughout the worship center with this GH4 70 to 200 combo with the Teradyke Ace 500. But when they get to the sermon, we actually went ahead and mounted it right here on this box. Now, you could not use this during worship because there'd be way too much vibration from the audio. Um, but during the sermon, it's great. And we use this for a head to toe follow cam. I actually just got some conduit and rigged up an extension pole for our fluid head and it works really well. This monitor down here is actually showing them the live feed that's being received from our ATEM. So they can just sit here and they can watch right here and not have to crane their necks up and look and they're seated at a comfortable level. This monitor right here is showing the program output that is going to our stream. And that is where our second operator is. All right, welcome to the next station. This is ProPresenter Operator Land. We're using an iMac that is hooked into a DeckLink Duo. And we have here our program main feed out, our stage display output on these little monitors that we have rigged onto one of these little stands. Those are just cheap guys off Amazon. Um, and then we have old school Apple keyboard and mouse. I'm a big believer in using wired mouse keyboard for essential workstations like this. The last thing that you want is to have your magic mouse go dead and then have to plug it in on the bottom, the dumb Apple way with a lightning connector. So we have an old Apple keyboard, old Apple mouse. And recently we added this stream deck right here that uh, we use to clear our screens except the hallways using companion on that and that seems to be working well. So this is where ProPresenter person lives. We chose to put it next to our lighting station because they work in cahoots a lot with our lighting cues the way we have those set up and designed. Speaking of lighting, here's our fourth station, our lighting operator. We are running Vista, the old Vista, not the new updated one, just because if it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? We have this vertical screen for reviewing our playlists. The way we run our lighting is everything is pre-built on one playlist for that service in order. And then they use our Jans M1 unit simply just to click play on the play button. And we can control a few different things on this. Uh, playlist. We have one default look that's set up for anytime someone comes in here, they can just push the button and it brings all the necessary lights on. We have a house and our stage cam lights that you can control as well here. The reason that we have ProPresenter and our lighting person right here next to each other is a lot of times our lighting operator is basing when to change the light cues off of slide numbers on ProPresenter or the clock on the stage display. And also, it's just easy to connect the MIDI between the two this way since they're right here next to each other. And they have a good view of what they're designing as well when they're sitting here. All right, so now we're up in the top tier, the original sound booth area that we have changed to be mainly our stream director setup. 
So we also have a station behind me that I'm not going to get into. It's just an extra iMac that we can use for chat hosting, that kind of thing. But this is Streamland, as we like to call it. So we have one screen that is our multi-view for our eight cameras. They're not all on right now because I don't need to set them up for this. And that is happening right here on this ATEM Studio HD. That was our original setup. Then we went to add our lower thirds graphics with key and fill. And we wanted even to add more things like we have an input now on our stage where someone can plug a laptop in and we can send the aux out of this ATEM to our projector. So we have a second Studio HD um, that is being seen over here on this multi-view. And so this is where our stream director lives and they are communicating with our cameramen with these ultralight ear tech units that work very well. Signal flow wise, all of our cameras go into this Studio HD. That program feed feeds out into our secondary ATEM right here on input five. And then that is actually hitting our HyperDeck uh, Mini. And then out of that, it's going over to our Mac Mini right here that's controlling our stream. I'd love to update that to a hardware encoder, maybe the Web Presenter HD when those start shipping. Control-wise, the director has a lot that they can do. We have a Studio One Productions LANC unit here that controls our cable cam. So you can zoom in and out. And then they also have, it's on a best core unit. And so they can control the pan and tilt with the best core there. Our cable cam, they can control the Moza Air gimbal pan and tilt with this as it's going back and forth on the cable cam. And and as far as switching inputs, all of our guys do it a little bit differently. Some like to just use the buttons here on the ATEM. Other guys will use this little tin key that we have. I get questions about this all the time. It's just a Bluetooth number pad. Um, your ATEM software is already set up to when you push number one, two, three on your keyboard, it previews that. And then you just hit enter to go to it. And so that's all this is doing. It's just a wireless way to do it on a quick tin key fashion. So that is our stream director station. All right, guys, so there's the tour. I hope it helps you if you're kind of researching, maybe switching up your tech booth area. Here's some things that we wish we would have done differently. Number one, make sure you get rid of all the creaks and the squeaks. Maybe glue down the plywood if you're up for that. Um, there are a couple spots in our sound booth that kind of make some noise as people walk around, which can be annoying. Number two, I wish we would have added a second pole for our cameras. Now that we're doing more follow cam stuff, it would be great to have two poles so that one could be a head to toe follow and one could be a tight shot follow. And so I wish we would have gone ahead and installed a second pole, especially since it only cost us like $75. Number three, I'm sure some of you are going to say it. I wish that we would have made our ledges for our sound booth area to be angled out just a little bit so people couldn't put drinks up there. We've not had a single drink sat on those yet, but people do tend to put pieces of paper every once in a while up there. We do have some angle on them, and they're pretty skinny, but I wish we would have gone ahead and just tapered them off. And I guess we could always add a cap to them to solve that problem if it becomes a necessity. And the last thing we learned, why didn't we do this sooner? I know we, it's hard to do things like this when you're meeting week in and week out, but gosh, that's been a silver lining of the pandemic when we did have to shut down is we're able to do things like this. And um, man, it's just been, it's just made life back here in the tech booth so much more enjoyable for my volunteers. And I'm so glad that we did it. So hope that helps you guys. Remember, we can do a lot of great things. Let's do them all for the right reasons. We'll see you in the next one.